Hello everybody, today we're gonna to take a look at analog audio over an ethernet cable. I feel like this is a common thing that a lot of people are dealing with now and uh, I just wanted to make a quick little video just showing a few things. Uh, one of those things being specifically the pinouts um, for just a regular Twisted Pair Cat 6 uh, for analog audio. So um, the boxes that we're gonna take a look at today are the uh, radial catapult minis. Um, these are just really excellent for what they are that sends um, an analog, you know, obviously, like I said earlier, an analog audio signal down a CAT6 cable. So um, looking at the box, you've got a um, EtherCon, just a Neustrick EtherCon jack. Um, this is what you can, uh, when you can plug into, it will accept either the EtherCon barrel or just a regular RJ45. Um, and then it breaks it out into uh, four channels of balanced audio. So in this application, we've got a TRS. Um, I've got one of the boxes taken apart, uh, that's XLR, um, and just wanted to show you how it works. So basically on the back of this EtherCon jack, you've got a little PCB and then there's just two little Molex kind of style, uh, crimp connectors. Um, this is the shield. So anybody that's used to, um, a shielded RJ45 will recognize this. It's very much the same. Um, if you look where my uh, index finger is pointing right there, all of the ground lines are um, tied together and soldered directly to this. So uh, the shield pins, which are these uh, little little silver pieces right here, are actually what connects your grounds, which segues into the first thing that I think we should talk about is what are the pinouts for um, analog audio over, over Cat5, Cat6. So I have this broken down. Uh, we call this, I call it orange stripe. Sometimes people call it orange white. So this is just a traditional B standard um, for wiring, orange stripe, orange, green stripe, blue, blue stripe, green, brown stripe, and brown, and then with the shield. Um, so the pinning goes channel four, channel uh, pin two hot of channel three, uh, channel two, the cold of channel three, and then channel one. Now, the pinning on this is the same for XLR or quarter inch. Um, and I'll list this in the, uh, in the description. So if, you're, if you've just come here for the pinouts, I'll leave that in the description. But there's just a couple of things that I did want to talk about. Um, so when you're sending analog audio down a CAT6 or CAT line, let's just call it a CAT line, um, the grounds are all tied together to this. Now, what that means for you is essentially if, if you're using an unshielded cable, um, and what I mean by that is just a regular, a regular network cable. Now, this is an example of a shielded cable. Um, this is called a data tough cable. Uh, this is pretty standard in the entertainment industry for, um, uh, it's a tactical cable for uh, stage boxes or anything like that. So what I did was I stripped the wire here. This is 26 gauge wire. Um, and this is what I used to determine the pinouts, but I just wanted to show you what an entertainment grade cable looks like. This is um, versus something that's in your, that you would get in a pull box from a hardware store. So um, you've got a couple levels of shielding here. Uh, you've got a tactical exterior jacket. You've got folded or a foil here. And this is this, so this is your uh, shield wire. Um, and then there's another um, internal jacketing. And then there's the little plus, um, the little plus piece that, that keeps all the conductors separated. So uh, when we're talking about shielded cable, if you don't know whether or not you have a shielded cable or not, if it does not have this uh, silver wire, you don't have a shielded cable. Um, so this is what carries your ground signal and therefore allows phantom power to work. So two things that we need to talk about. Uh, one, if you're not using a shielded cable, phantom power will not work. Um, and then the other one is um, if you're not using a shielded cable, you don't necessarily have grounding. You only have the positive, the, the, um, the hot and the cold pin. So you only have pin two and pin three, you don't have pin one. Um, so, it's, so it's important that you understand that going in so that if you do have noise issues, you know where to start. So it um, doesn't mean you can't use a, uh, a non-shielded cable 
Uh, you certainly can, you just may be prone to noise and you can't use phantom power. So um, that comes into play for if you're using a building's existing infrastructure, um, you know, if you want to send audio to another side of the building and have it go through a network rack in its analog format, you may not um, have phantom power working for that and it may be noisy just because you don't have the ground. Um, so specifically, that, that pretty much uh, has everything um, as far as the description goes. I just wanted to show you what this looked like on the inside. Uh, I'm working on a project and just wanted to know how Radial did it, and I also wanted to know their pinout, so that's listed below. Um, if you have any questions, which I feel like a lot of people might on this, please just uh, leave a comment below. I'd be happy to answer anything um, and go into anything into more detail. Um, about phantom power or, or anything like that. Um, I'm always looking for content for new videos, so that might be a cool thing. So uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, please, again, let us know if you have any questions. We'd happy to answer anything in detail. Um, appreciate, uh, appreciate you stopping by. Hope everybody has a great day.